You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and I am so glad to be with you today and so glad that you're choosing to be with us today. This is episode number 1026. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you do enjoy it. Thank you again for listening to the show. Really, thank you. Thank you for supporting us as well. If you're a Drone You member, we greatly appreciate everything uh, that you have really ever done for us. So thank you. Also, big shout out and thank you to all of the mapping students in New York. Really, uh, really grateful for some of the responses and video testimonials that we've gotten back from that class. So really do appreciate it. We're going to jump right into today's question. Uh, But before we do, the sponsor for today, since the podcast is something that we like to give out for free, we like to give out information for free. But if you want organized deep dive content, like for our mapping class, well, don't forget before we jump into that, that we always have a flight mastery or what we call our drones operational course before every mapping training. So if you want to attend a flight mastery course where you go through 12 sequential exercises to help you master the different flight modes, the different natural curvature flight moves to get smooth motion, maybe you want the settings, or maybe you're like me and you understand that in order to set up a successful drone business and program, you have to create and build habits and routines from the get-go. So if you want to learn the rules of takeoff, landing, how to avoid emergency um, issues, and learn the battery test, the only way that you can tell whether your battery is actually able to fly or not within the first 10 seconds of flight. If you want to learn all those things and more, you've got to go to a flight mastery training. It's one of the only drone trainings that actually pays itself off. So you're not really paying for a training it's more of like an investment for the success of your business because if you pass the obstacle course at the end of that training you are automatically granted an educational rate for your liability and whole insurance for your drones through skywatch so check that out also check out our mapping class if you haven't seen some of the testimonials that have come back they're really amazing you're about to hear one actually in this question check it out i've got the link below Um, in fact i actually even copied the link so i know some of you have said the bitly links don't quite work in the way that you think they do if you type them out that's because typically you have to type them out as https um, colon slash slash bit dot ly forward slash Denver mapping class. It's also on our Facebook page if you want to check it out. But you're not going to want to miss this one. This is going to be a great experience training. And again, for those of you who don't know, a drone you mapping class, this is a comprehensive deep dive into mapping. What types of photos do you need to make beautiful maps? What are the different processing softwares? How do we use those processing softwares? How do we generate deliverables? And have you ever been to a drone mapping class that actually provides you with deliverables that you can use in your portfolio to sell yourself? That's the drone you difference. So check out our training and join us today. Hi guys, this is Chucky again from California. I wanna say, Paul, thank you so much for showing me how to do the time-lapse with the point cloud. That worked out really well with my client. It was a crazy upsell. Uh, I'll show you my work one day. Anyhow, my next question is, 5G, I need a solution that I can use to scan my sites that will also cover the 2.4 to 5.8 range as well, but other undetected or unseen or unforeseen uh, interference that I, I need to be aware of. I need a solution that will also detect the 5G as well. Hope that makes sense. Um, trying to prevent flyaways, minimize my uh, my problems. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you, Chucky. Appreciate that very much. Thanks for taking the time to uh, hop on the computer and send your question in. Um, I'm wondering how many people do this nowadays. We know that our, our very own PJ is very uh, religious about doing this and making PJ sure is, he checks. Yeah. <laughs> religious is a very good way to put it because... He's, um, PJ is the master of systems, and that's why he's now on the executive board at Drone U. But we give our hearts out actually to PJ as he is going through a, uh, a tough time right now with his family, and we wish you the best. But he is, when it comes to uh, going out and checking sites for interference, Rob, 
do you know another person that always uses a spectrometer? Because you even called me out and say, wait, wait a minute, <laughs> are you still using that? Um, I have. I don't know anybody. <laughs> well, um, there there are people. I would say people who work in telecommunications probably use them. Yeah, the most, it depends or, on what they're working on, I suppose. For sure. Um, but it you know it brings up a really good question. It's like if you're in an area, what interference should you be looking for? But are there pieces of interference that are going to be invisible to you? Are there going to be interference that maybe you don't see into the last minute and causes you to crash? Don't forget, Rob, the story from one of our instructors when he was working for a very famous golf tournament. And mm. I think it was like Fox News or CNN, one of those two, decides to flip on their live broadcasting satellite and just saturated the 2458 uh, band like completely and dumped this guy's drone. And the very golf, expensive drone, no less. On a very expensive golf course. And the golf yeah. course wanted them to pay for the damages to the golf course. But what saved him was he had in his contract that if you, any of your employees, any of your affiliates, volunteers, partners, uh, vendors, whatever, turns on anything between this band and this band, it's not our fault if something happens because we're giving you prior acknowledgement that these cannot be used while we're in flight. It saved his butt literally from like probably a hundred grand of uh, costs. So I would recommend in your services contract, that's probably one of the things, you know, there's so many law pros out there and so many, you know, people writing contracts, but this is again, one of those really important pieces of, unless you've been in this industry for a very long time and you understand the nuances of it, you could very quickly get yourself into trouble. So, Absolutely. Um, I th you know, it's funny. It actually reminds me, we had put a services contract on the site and I don't think we ever launched it. So before I talk about that, I'll go on the site and make sure it's there. Um, but anyway, what other things can you look for when it comes to flying around points of interference? Well, for sure, you need to be looking around you for one, tall buildings, two, what is around you that's also steel or magnetic? Like or, bridges and so forth. Yes, like mm -hmm. reinforced concrete, right? Mm -hmm. Rebar reinforced Parking concrete. Parking structures. Parking doesn't structures. doesn't have to be a tall building. That's, yeah, that's Lots true. of concrete would be an indication. But don't forget, flying between tall buildings, there's obviously a lot of interference. Right. Flying around college campuses, crazy amount of Wi-Fi interference. Now, he asked, you know, what's the unit that he can use to essentially uh, look for potential interference? You know, we've talked about this before, and I'm just going to put it out there again, but the RF Explorer 6G combo, I might have said 5G combo before, maybe that's why he said the 5G is himself, but it's the 6G combo, and it does cover the 2.4 to 6 gigahertz band. Um, so Which is what percentage of what you'd have to deal with? Almost 100%. All, it is 100%. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're like a professional, like truly professional drone pilot, and you're working on like 7.1 or 1.8. Uh, which is a really great frequency because no one's on it. Not um, bad. But that's also something that a lot of people don't know about. So that being said, moving forward, what other points of interference or what other ways can we check for this interference? You know, guys, don't forget that there is a spectrometer built into your remote with DJI. If you go into DJI Go 4, top right corner, click the settings, go to the little remote, you can see different points of interference. Now, it's not a very good representation of interference, but it is something that you should be checking. And again, this is something that you should have in your standard operating procedures. Don't forget, metal roofs, another huge point of interference. Um, I've actually seen more crashes into metal roofs than I think anything else, Rob. Yeah, I would imagine you're just not thinking that it's going to be an issue. It's just a roof. It's just a roof. Right? So you don't pay attention. In fact, when imagine. I was getting some B-roll for something else flying this roof, it's unreal, the amount of interference. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, this is also why I think attitude mode is so important. Hopefully, uh, we will see on the enterprise drones, um, attitude is available or hopefully some way to hack into those. I'm still working on that. <laughs> so, I'm sure if it's there, you'll find it. Oh, I will, I will find it. So <laughs> if you don't, I'm just trying to make will. it so that other people can do it too, because it would make it very, very useful, especially when, you know, I did a poll this weekend, Rob, on the Instagram for drone you, if you haven't followed us on Instagram at the drone you.com. Um, and I did a poll. I said, can you believe that this is the public safety drone? Like, and I had a picture of the FDNY uh, drone. And I did that for two reasons. Number one is they've got it wrapped in red for the perception that this is here to help not mm -hmm. hurt. 
which has had a huge effect. You know, we talked about that on the FDNY show. But in addition, 70% of people said yes, they believe it's the public safety drone until I posted the M210 after that and said, are you sure it's still really the public safety drone? And then the numbers dropped significantly. But the reason I'm talking about this is because the uh, M2 Enterprise Dual really could use enter uh, attitude mode for safety for dealing with um, points of interference. Now, when I brought that up with John Walkie about him flying it um, and Mike uh, about him flying it, they love the VPS system and it's really helped them even in areas that are prone to extreme uh, interference like mm -hmm. New York City. So that's good, but I still think that they need to have other ways to mitigate accidents because Absolutely. if you have a flyaway, you have no way to stop it. Right. So uh, I think it's something they should do. Uh, other points of interference, we talked about rebar. Uh, if you are over a lot of water infrastructure uh, or arroyos, hmm. that's also another uh, huge point of interference. If you are near certain radio towers, depending on which tower, or if it's FM or AM or what they're broadcasting on, that can potentially cause you uh, problems as well. Um, let's see, if you are flying on a boat and it's steel, that's going to be a problem. Um, if the boat is not moving and the engines are turned off and you're flying and taking off from an elevated position that's not around metal, that may actually work. It's worked for me. Um, I'm trying to think here, Rob, what other interference? Um, Besides the obvious Power ones, lines. Power lines is power one that lines. comes to mind as an obvious one. Yeah, don't Cell stand towers, near power lines. Obviously. Yeah, I've never had an issue with a cell tower. Where I do have issues is the FAA's microwave towers. It's across the street. Oh, just, yeah, right across the street from us. So another reason that I love having our tra drone training field is lowered into the ground, and it's so cool. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's like it was built for us. Almost. Anyway, I think we answered today's question about interference. You got to watch where you're flying. You don't want to be flying between tall buildings, near power lines, near rebar, near parking structures. You know, did you mention the actual the RF Explorer 6G combo? Okay. Is the spectrometer that you should use that's going to give you the best amount of information and data in your area. And of if, course there's a link yeah. in the show notes. If you are a serious drone pilot, this is something that should be in your kit, just hands down. Just like I believe a Wii Boost should be in your kit, but most people don't even know what a Wii Boost is. So, <laughs> anyway. I've been in your car, so I do, and I enjoy it. <laughs> it's a nice little feature it's for helpful. sure. Uh, although Bill was making fun of me. He's like, you know, for all the tech you have, he's like, sometimes you still are unable to, to, to do things. And I was just like, eh, sometimes it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway on that bombshell that's gonna do it for us today my name is paul my name is rob and thanks for leaving us a review on the show you guys have no idea how much it helps us and so send your questions in please yeah, send your questions in uh it brings up a good point really quick before we go p.s some people have been saying we've been doing a lot of mapping questions i think that's because we've asked for a lot of mapping questions if you have a question that you want to submit go to askdroneu.com set the stage what do you want to talk about let's talk about it because while this is a drone podcast people are building businesses people are learning the life balance people are learning about mapping a very technical subject and systems and scaling there's a lot going on so even though we're focused around the drone business there's a lot to learn myself included here here yeah no seriously we'd love to hear it's funny because we talked about this and we decided that things just happen in waves and we've sort of been in a mapping wave for good reason mm -hmm. but uh, definitely would love to hear some subject matter from y'all that's different from mapping for sure totally. don't stop with mapping there's a lot out there for that but let's uh let's hear some other stuff too appreciate you guys thank you see you next time thanks for listening <laughs>